Teat minut ni zea. Ani je se je dut potimu mi dobsto stran. Teat minut ni ni bude. Da, no nada bila beton pa duma tranche. Teat minut ne. Moje bi dve minute, no ni teat. Jeste za dve. Da, jeste bi za dve, za tri da je možda. A uže, da, uže sobrali si, ja vidio. Uže dva se želvek sobrali si. Jeste vi ne veklušite. No, da će jeste bude perere. Jeste, you know, zatisica da pustim. No, ne veklušica. Ljudi iš jo mogu ždat. A jeste... You got the notification, huh? Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Is anybody trying the the voice? Can you hear the greetings? Oh, it's not there. Is the voice okay? The sound okay? Okay, good. This HMT has been a HMT of congratulations. Today I'm also going to congratulate uh, Queen Nkiru or Pastor Nkiru. Each time I don't need to call her Pastor, I have to tw- think twice. <laughs> so, Queen and Kiru, for a success of becoming uh, an Amazon bestseller, number one bestseller. <laughs> so, maybe she will say a word of two or two to encourage people and to let them know that all things are possible, even for them. Can we get the microphone? Microphone, much than I'm afraid that's. Okay. So, with your short sleeve, you still became first be- bestseller. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah. Even in t shirts. Yeah. I know when it's hot. <laughs> you, mean, you mean success doesn't discriminate? <laughs> 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 No, 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 no. <laughs> if you work hard. You work hard. It will reward you. Yes. yes. <laughs> Even if you are having short sleep. <laughs> like, and, those, and those who are not wearing short sleep, if they don't work hard, that thing will not deliver them. <laughs> they will hide it up and recognize. <laughs> yes, go ahead, please. Yeah, life is predictable, yeah? yeah? That's what we learned yesterday. So, I want to thank everyone that took time, you know, to check on the book, to get a copy for themselves or for their daughter, <laughs> because everybody all around the world got the book, and he made the book to be number one in all Amazon marketplace. So, I really thank God, and I, I thank God also for the feedbacks that I'm getting, you know, an inbox, you know, you know, a lot of a lot of you know messages that will make you to keep on moving so i encourage anyone and everyone that is hearing me now that know that you have a book in you which i know i always tell people that every human being on earth has at least one book in him at least one book if you don't know how to go about it write me i made a video today use me and it's all part of the testimony. Use me. You can use me to write your book. I will tell you what I know. Or I will at least tell you how I do my own. Then you can do yours. At least a book is in you. And you can get it out. And that should be part of your kingdom fruit. I can't overemphasize on the fact of having fruit. If you create one, it keeps creating doors for you. For other things that you don't even know that lies in you. 
from being a truth. Mm-hmm. So you just take discipline as you talk today mm-hmm. and stepping out and you just start. Don't look at us first. Start from the first step. Mm-hmm. And as you go, the vision will be clearer for you. The whole world is waiting for all of us. If I can sit here and somebody in America that I've never met before and say, your book saved my life. I'm done. I'm ready to go home. But I know I have a lot of work to do, so I'm not ready. There's still a lot to do. So please, get the copies if you haven't gotten it. And if you got the copy, please go to where you got it and leave us some review to make others to get the book. Because that is the uh, the motive, yeah? To bless lives, to give values, which is what we get from DSA. So, use me, get my books, and use me through that. Thank you. Yay. Yes, and I want to thank DSA so much because <laughs> the kind of opportunity he gives us here, I've never seen it anywhere, you know. You just give him a little seed, he will push you, he will make you feel as if you are as big as my head. This is my head. <laughs> Even when you know that you are nothing, but he sees your future. You know, just like a father that we have. And I so, so much appreciate him. I keep on pushing me. He's the one that made me a bestseller. He's the one that has made me all the titles that I have. All the titles, past all this and that is DSA. So I really thank you, sir. Afri- and Africans are grateful. But yeah. I do that to everybody. I don't know. DSA and D- <laughs> DSA and DBA. That is Dr. Bosa Adelaj. I'm so grateful. The fact is that if you know my history, if you watched uh, my Kingdom Fruits, you know that all these things happened within a year. So that makes it so unique. That, that gives you uh, the understanding of the power of having a mentor. I mean a good mentor, because we have some mentors that don't know what they're doing. But we have, like, <laughs> like uh, Queen Anastasia says, <laughs> the, the whole world, you know, the number one mentor in the whole wide world. So get yourself a mentor. And the mentor that I know that gives so much freedom, you know, you know wearing something without shoulders, <laughs> you know, being just free. Nothing, you know, we, we complicate things. And that freedom is so attractive. It has attracted me. The way he loves people. I can keep talking on, on and on and on. The word that I say, use me, where did I get it from? From him. He say, use me, let me be your ladder. You use him in a big way, use me in a smaller way, you know. <laughs> so anywhere I can help you, write me. Some are writing already, some are calling me after my video. I'm available. Congratulations once again, yes. Queen Kiru Ojimadu. Okay, here we go. Huh. The third characteristic, for anything to be truth, for anything to be truth, it must have certain characteristics. I already I described the truth to you. The truth must be a reflection of the ideal or of the original. And we know that the original is in heaven. So that's why for us to say we are people of truth and that we believe in the kingdom of God. You know, you can say you believe in something. If you don't, that's why faith without work is dead. So you could say as much as you want that you believe in the kingdom of God. But if you are not transmitting and transforming the kingdom of God here, if you are not reflecting it, you don't really believe in it. If you, because truth, the truth of the fact that you believe in it is the fact that you are going to duplicate. You are going to be a direct or exact reflection of the original thing. That is truth. That means you have now walked in the truth of that word. So let's say I say I believe in the kingdom of God. And the Bible says that in the kingdom of God there is no pain and no tears. So what is my purpose being on the earth? I must reflect, I must walk in the truth of that kingdom. And of that my affirmation that I believe in the kingdom. So I must dedicate my life to eradicating people's pain and wiping off their tears. That should just be my natural nature because that is my belief. I live for the kingdom. I live for the kingdom, then I reflect the kingdom. If the Bible says that the kingdom of, in the kingdom of God, there are mansions, beautiful places, even the road are made of gold and 
you know, the, the gates are of pure, I mean, pearl and things like that. That tells me excellence is a feature of the kingdom. So, I'm a kingdom person. We must do everything the very best. And if we do the very best, we become the best. That means we will not have competition, competitors in anything we do. We will always be the very best. But more than that, we will be building cities. We will be building roads that last for generations, that reflect the gold that is the golden road that is in heaven, that reflect the house of pearl that we saw in heaven. But if I really believe in it, I will walk in the truth of it. That is important of the truth. That's why the Bible says, J Jacob says, I mean James, that in Russia it's called Jacob. James, the person who did that has to report to me. The person who did that, the person has got to report to me today. After I finish this class, that person has to give me the report. Whoever took that decision and went to sleep has to give me the decision. Has to report to me. Okay. You know what they did? They took all the mattresses out and then they left them in the sun. I mean, in the, for the sun to dry. And then there was rain in the after, you know, one hour ago, two hours ago. And there is rain going. The person who were, all the mattresses of the house, you kill them. And they put them out. And the person just forgot, went to sleep, what, I don't know, went to sleep or whatever. Condemn. You are not going to sleep today. You're going to sleep on the floor. Maybe yours were not taken, but all the, like 100 mattresses are out there from the bed. And nobody remembered when rain was going on. Mm -hmm. Welcome to reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two hours of rain soaked in, destroyed everything. Anyway, forget. So the truth is that if we really believe in the kingdom, we are going to reflect that kingdom. So, so many people that are Preaching about kingdom is a joke. Let me tell you more. So many people who are preaching about God is a joke. They don't really believe in God. That's why James said, if you say you believe in something and there are no works to reflect it, to prove it, yes. don't, even say, don't even talk about believing in it because it's dead. That's your faith is dead. You don't have faith. You don't believe in it. Faith produces substance. What's the substance you produce? It's not truth. If it is truth, why did he say faith without work is dead? Why is it dead? Because it's not true. What is not true? How do I know that it's not true? Because it's not producing the result. So it's not true. So if I say, let's say you are God. Pastor, come here. Let's say I say you are God, and this is God, and I believe in God, but I'm not reflecting Him. I'm not. Ref I'm not reflecting Him. It means I don't believe in God. I can talk it any amount of talk I want. I can do. I can. I can do any jargon. I can say I believe in God, or I have faith in God, or I do this and that. But if God is love, if he says God is love, he told you, koro, koro, sh no, black and white, plain, that God is love. And I say, I believe in that love. Then I don't reflect that love. Yeah, you can kid me. You can kid me. You can, I mean, you can fool me. You can fool me, you can fool them, you can fool him, you can fool everybody else, but you will not fool one person. He, God, that knows. What is truth? Truth is the ability to make your life, or whatever you say you believe, to make sure that your actions are in line to that reality you say you believe in. You've got to portray it. You've got to reflect it. You've got to duplicate it. You've got to demonstrate it. So if I say, I believe in God, and God is love, that's why sometimes the gay community that we don't like so much, they have an argument against us. They say, God is love, so what are you doing? You are not loving us now. 
Instead of us to love them and hate the sin or dislike the sin, we just put everything together. <laughs> we just put everything together in one bunch and just hate all of them put, put together. So we are behaving with hatred or with disdain towards them. So where is your love? So I cannot say I believe in him and in his love. That is his essence. And I'm then just behaving opposite. Then your faith is dead. Because you are not walking in the truth. In anything you say you believe and you are not walking in that truth and you are not reflecting that the truth of what you said, that faith, that confession is dead. It is not true. At least that is how God is seeing it. That is God's attitude towards it. Now, Everybody might think you are a bishop here. Everybody might think that you are the closest person to God. Now we have a language for it. Man of God. If you are a man of God, I will see love. If you are a man of God, I will see God. If you are a man of God, I will see his characteristics. If you are a man of God, I will see his character. I don't need to look for God. That's why I tell people, if you don't need to look for God to find him. You, you don't need to find him. Leave God alone. Find me, you will meet God. Why? Because I walk in the truth that I really believe in God. That's why you cannot, unless you have to be mischievous to say you met Pastor Sunday and you don't see God. Or you have to be so dead that even if God himself had appeared, we will still be blind. Because I try as much as possible to reflect that truth of who God is. That reality of who God is. And in everything I do, I try my best. I'm not perfect. I fail. I, I try, but I try. And I'm, when I fail, I say it. And, you know, I'm reflecting him as much as I could. I, but so, but I've, I've done enough that it's almost un, it's impossible to be hidden anymore. So what does it mean to walk in truth? I spoke to you about the three. I, I, told, I, told, I gave you, I'm giving you the thought today, right? Yeah, I gave you some characteristics of walking in truth. The first characteristic I gave you remembers. Truth has to be universal for it to be recognized and accepted as truth. What is universality of truth? Universality of truth talks about it being true to all peoples in all places and at all times. So there is nothing I can say that is true that only applies to Africans. There is nothing I can say is true that, that, that only applies to my denomination. There is something that, nothing I can say is true that could not apply a thousand years ago and could not apply a thousand years to come. That is why I'm writing my books. Because I'm writing it based on truth. They will apply in a hundred thousand years to come. Because it's based on truth. Truth will always be relevant. Universality of truth. That's why I am leaving a record for 300 years, 500 years to come. Because I know the things I'm writing, they will still be relevant in three, 500 years' time. I'm spending my energy, I'm giving my life to writing those things. I'm releasing as much as possible because I want to keep on preaching when I'm gone 300 years later or 500 years later. And I know it, my voice will stand, sound louder when I'm gone than when I'm here. So, that is the first condition upon which a truth could be recognized. What is the second condition? What is the second characteristic that truth must bear or have for it to be recognized as truth? What is that? Absolute. Yeah. Truth has to be always absolute. Absolute means it is not 99% true or 80% true or 90, no, 50% true, it has to be true and it has to be unquestionable. It has to apply to all he said that he pertain, it pertains to. It has to be undoubtable. It has to be, you know, it has to be able to protect itself and to establish itself and confirm itself at all places, to all people, at all times. So now today, don't go yes, sir. Now today, the third characteristic of truth 
that I'm going to be talking about is, you know, people are watching my messages of 12 years ago, 10 years ago, 11 years ago. Some guys in my church just went and put them on YouTube. And people are writing me like crazy. They say, ah, you've been preaching this thing 12 years ago, 15 years ago. He knows. He's been around that long. And he knows. I'm not changing. Truth doesn't change. You know, they are talking 10 years ago. I said, what's wrong with them? In a thousand years ago, it, I mean, a thousand years to come, it will still be as relevant. They will say, ah, this guy has been talking about this thing that long. We thought it started when Miles Monroe died. Oh, no. Before I knew Miles Monroe, I've been talking the same thing. So, no, no, the three, the third characteristic of truth, for anything to be recognized as truth, that truth or that statement or that belief system or that affirmation must, first of all, that belief, that affirmation, that statement must, first of all, be only objective rather than subjective. Now, what is subjective and what is objective? Truth must be absolute. Truth, I mean, truth must be universal. Truth must be absolute. Truth must be objective, not subjective. For truth to be recognized as such, it must be objective, not subjective. What's the difference between objective and subjective? Object, let's start with, first of all, start with subjective. Subjective means it is the opinion of the subject. It is the opinion of the person who is expressing that. But objective is I that am expressing the thing. It is not only not my opinion, right? But I who is expressing the subject, I who is expressing that opinion, I have made that subject matter or that truth that matter, that opinion that I'm expressing, I have made it higher than myself. I have elevated that truth above my individuality, above my personality, above my preferences, above my belief, above my opinion, more than elevating it above myself, I have subjected myself to the authority of that of truth, of that truth. I have subjected myself. I have accepted that truth. I have made it my dominion. I have submitted and subject. That is the only attitude we could all have towards the truth. Every one of us must succumb to the truth. Every one of us must subject ourselves to the truth. Every one of us must be dominated by the truth. Every one of us must make ourselves this a slave to truth. Willing slave. Free slave. Born slave. Yeah, every one of us must make the truth to be elevated above us. Above our wishes. Above our feelings. Above our opinion. So that's why I used the example one time when I work with my assistants and when some of them are female. Then in the morning I say, oh, you look so nice. What a haircut. Oh, you got a makeup. Then she's all, all happy. Two hours later, she's walking around and being happy. Then, two hours later, after she had walked around like that, I come and I say, uh, I'm sorry, you didn't do this thing I told you to do since yesterday. Ha! But I told you to be fast about it and to do it. On that. What is wrong with you? You, you where I, Use your head. Use your head. I don't touch them, but I say, why are you not using your head? You must learn to think. Think. Then two hours later, I say, ah, I can't see this girl again, no. For two hours, she has been walking up and down with my present. Now what happened? Where did she go? Did she go home? They said, no, she's crying somewhere. Ah, crying. What? <laughs> How come crying? What's wrong? Well, uh, but you were just saying I was the best, yes, you know, two hours ago. I was the best, I was, you know, the best, I was, the, you know, you love me and all that. I love you. He was like, I love you. But now what happened? Ooh, I don't think you love me. Ah! 
in two hours. <laughs> maybe not in two hours, maybe in five minutes. <laughs> I don't love you again. Because they, they are not walking by the truth. Truth has not been elevated above emotions. And most people are not even touching their emotions by the truth. They are not even allowing truth to mess up with their emotions, to even come close to their emotion at all. Their emotion is sacred to them. Truth doesn't even have chance. They don't even want open gate to emotion to their emotion. Truth doesn't even have. So whenever there is a need for truth or their <laughs> emotions, it's their emotion. They are used to their emotions. They are, they are married to their emotions. They are united with their emotions. Their, their feelings is their truth. If before you could live right and before you could live kingdom, you must make sure you divorce your emotions and your feelings from yourself and attach instead of it truth to yourself. Truth must take the place of your emotion. Truth must be superior to your emotions. And your emotions must be subjected. It must bow before the truth of God. And you must make sure that you don't have opinion. Your emotion doesn't have opinion in the place of truth. If the thing that this man has told me is true, I submit my opinion. My, I don't have feelings anymore. I don't have, my feelings, you have to keep quiet. My crying, my tears, you have to keep quiet. Because what is told me is true. The truth must be the only determinant. That means, that way, that truth is objective. You know, the objectivity of truth. But when you cry and say, okay, I know you love me, but I um, just feel bad anyway. You are making truth to be subjective. So now it's no more true because you are feeling bad. That is now, you are making it subjective to your own feeling, your own opinion. That the same way, you all, and that's what American society has not been able to do. You have to do the same thing concerning your opinion. But in America, because of democracy and people have told them you are free, so people now think that their opinion should be higher than truth. So because it is so hard to come against the truth, and you cannot say your own personal opinion is higher than truth, so they decided to come with philosophy and say, okay, truth then is not absolute. So let's just make it relative, Janet. Let's just uh, open the door for anybody. It will just be subjective and relative. So let anybody just make his own truth. So they destroy the foundation of the society. I mean, but they are not touching society. Oh. If they really believe in it, they will practice in the economy. If they really believe in it, they will practice in government. If they really believe in it, they will practice everywhere. But they are practicing only where it can be a practice. It is, uh, 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 they don't see immediate res- uh, no, yeah, consequences. So you must If you believe in anything or you say anything is true, that truth has to be elevated above your opinion. You have to agree that your opinion takes the back seat. You have to make your opinion bow before that truth. And you have to concede to yourself that I do not have an opinion anymore because the truth has appeared. Wherever truth appears, either it is proven scientifically, or it is based on the Bible, or it is proved by logic, or by humanity, or by universalism. Anything that proves to me the truth, and I see that it's truth, you must tell you it must be your lifestyle. Just like with the emotion, you don't consult anymore with that emotion, and you don't consult anymore even with your opinion. Once it has been discovered, so the only, the only Search. The only quest you need is the quest to know. Is this true? Once you discover truth, you are free. But not free to do anything you don't. Do free to make truth rule and reign over you. To make truth have supremacy over your thought system. Over your you know, emotions. Over your feelings. Over your you know, world view. Over your paradigm. Over your, over your lifestyle, over your you no know, traditions, over your cultures and norms, over your habits, over your 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 your, your expressions, over 
Anything that pertains to you, you must begin to put everything as a system, as a matter of urgency, under the authority of that truth. Then truth will not be subjective to you, but truth will be only an objectivity. So let's come back to God. I say I believe in God, and God is truth. And God is love. God is forgiveness. Have you ever heard Christians say, Ah, I know, but I can't forgive her. Ah, I know, but I can't forgive her. I understand in my head, but I can't forgive. They don't know anything about integrity of truth. You can't say you know, and then you say you see have an opinion. You don't know truth. You don't even know the importance of truth. You don't even know the efficacy of truth. You don't even know the potency of truth. You don't even know significance of truth and essentiality of truth. You don't have opinion. Any opinion is easy to operate. All to even exist. Where truth is known. So if you know that God has said, ah, me, I forgive you when you are in need and you came to me. So what's your problem? Don't have grudges or anger or anything against anybody. You shouldn't even have an opinion. It's not just about Bible only. Even any other truth. Just like with gravity. Is it gravity we say? If the theory of gravity, you know that it's true that from 7th floor or 12th floor, the truth is known. Uh, I will just use this case, okay? It will be faster if I jump, but uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> Oh, do you want to have an opinion uh, no. about jumping from the 20, 20, 20 It will be faster than the staircase. Oh. <laughs> Don't want to be, become faster. <laughs> Objectivity of truth. For example, Kiev is the capital of Ukraine. Oh, I don't know. Hey, you know, you don't know. <laughs> it's the capital of Ukraine. Well, let me think about it. Hey, think. Hey, you think, oh, you know, think, oh. Kiev is the capital of Ukraine. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, no, well, I don't really agree. Ah, uh, well, I will tell you later. Hey, agree, oh, no, agree, oh. Take your, go, go to the plane. I'll be going to the airport and take, buy your ticket now. And say, no, I'm going to Bangkok. They say, what was Bangkok? The capital of Ukraine. Hey, go now. You will land in Bangkok for sure. <laughs> Why? Because it is an established truth that Kiev is the capital of Kiev, I mean of Ukraine. So that is an objective truth right there because it is established truth. So that's what I'm saying. We are not just talking about truth from the Bible. Anything that is established either by science or by logic or by reason or by you know, so absolutism or by uh, uh, universalism, anything that's of, you know, doing any, any method that is established as the truth, you don't argue with it. You just go to, and no, no, that's what you do normally. You don't argue now. You just go to the airport and buy a ticket to keep Ukraine, that's all. <laughs> that's what most people will do. Or if I tell you, or maybe your team, your team has decided to go and play in the World Cup. Soccer, soccer, World Cup, football. That's what we know in this part of the world. Soccer, football. And then, <laughs> you had played for like 90 minutes and you only have two minutes left, extra time. Then you just say, ah, nobody is winning. They are not scoring, you are not scoring. You just say, you are, but I say, wait, there must be a winner, but they want to win. So you just pick the board with your two hands. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> and then you pick race, <laughs> like in American football, you became a runner or quarterback or what they call them or whatever, whoever. Huh? Rugby, American football. And you pick race and begin to run and dodge everyone and throw it. It's like bah. Then you pick it the second time, throw it like bah. And then we are two goals up. Hallelujah. <laughs> So, and you are now thinking that, that those goals will be counted. That is an objective action 
it is not the subjectivity of truth. And the subjectivity of truth is that you don't use your hands like that. Like in rugby or in America before to go and score. That is just the subjectivity of truth. Or if I say, in Kiev, in Kiev, Ukraine, the time right now is 9.35. And you say, no, ah, no, it's 12 o'clock. <laughs> hey, it's your problem now. <laughs> Make you woke up, they go for work. <laughs> <laughs> you can get up of bed and go to work. Yeah, good for you. Go to work, only nobody will be there. It will be locked by there. <laughs> because nobody is interested in your subjective truth. The truth must be objective. So that's why if we say man, and man is a man, woman is a, man, is a woman, and marriage is between man and woman, you say, I disagree. Hey, make you disagree. You can go and marry each other, but you get eight. Uh, congratulations. I love you, but uh, enjoy it. Enjoy that your hate. If you get to heaven, explain to God that you try to argue with truth. That's your problem. Not be your choice. <laughs> you cannot argue with truth and, and, and not be defeated. And win. And be victorious. The truth will beat you hands down. That is the objectivity. So all those people tr- trouble and say, oh, they, they have removed prayers from school. They have done. Hey, let them remove it now. They will reap the country they are reaping now. Only 4% of the youth now are coming to church or believing in God. You, you, you will reap communism. You will reap, reap uh, European something, society, post Christian society. That's what you will reap. Good for you. You will not win because truth will come to declare and speak for itself. And the consequences of violation will catch up with you. Thank you, sir. So, people who say they are believers in God, they don't really believe. Because if they walk in truth, that they really believe, you will still love them the first thing. People who say they are believers in God, and they don't forgive. Their faith is dead. Why? Because it's not according to truth. They don't, if they don't walk in truth, it's dead. They don't believe in God. So, you'll be surprised when you get to heaven. No? Uh, surprise, they plenty, plenty. A lot of surprises waiting up there. So, truth must be objective, not subjective. You got that? Must be objective, not subjective. Because if it's subjective, then it's subjected to your opinion. But it's objective, it cannot be subjected then. It has to be over and above your opinion. That is the beauty of truth right there. The beauty of truth. So for anything to be recognized as truth, it has to be absolutely objective. So what does that mean for truth to be objective, my dear? It means that truth is independent of the person who knows that truth. Even if you know the truth, that truth itself is superior to you and is independent of you. That means you cannot change it or twist it. You cannot change it, your opinion about it. Because it is not subject to you. It's not subjected to you. It doesn't depend on you. And it doesn't consult, consult with you. So truth is independent of you. So you can believe in it today. And you say, well, I changed my mind. I don't believe in it anymore. Eh, it's your problem. The truth will not change you. You say, okay, you are going to be in the minority. We, 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 we buy court. We buy court. We all, all, we all declare independence. We want all countries in the world to be pro-gay and pro-something. All that. We don't believe in you truth anymore. We, we vote by democracy, you are alone. We are all against you. Is that truth, it will remain the same. It's not, either you are all rebelling against it or, or all of you are saying it is not true, the truth doesn't even care. It's just like here in Ukraine. People are always getting surprised and saying, Pastor Sunday, 
Why are you still allowing people to come to your home? Why are you still open like this? Why are you still so, you know I mean, you are making yourself vulnerable too much. Especially after people have, you know, misused your trust, carrying news and lies about you and all kind of things. Why do you still trust people that way? Because love, for me, has become a truth. God is love. And I've discovered it not just as a word. Not as an experience. Not as a feeling. Not as an opinion. I have discovered it on the level of truth. So it doesn't matter how many people are stabbing me in the back or in the chest. I'm still going to love the way, same, same way I was loving. Lo opinion of truth, I mean, the truth does not, so it doesn't change according to the situation. In, in my country, Nigeria, they will say you have to be wise. With the truth, they say you have to be wise. Can you imagine? By saying you have to be wise, what they are saying is that just, uh, you know, change your mind, you know, just compromise with the truth. That's what they're trying to say. But, you know, the truth will remain the truth, even if you deny it a thousand times, even if all of you deny it and revolt against it, the truth will just remain there. In my, in my jargon, they say, Kampe. is it Kampe or is it Kampe? Kampe. Huh? Kampe. I remember I used to I used to say, say something like that when I was small in Africa. Kampe, just remain there, Kampe, Kampe, yeah, or Kampe, or Kampe. Is it Ghanaian like, what? They say the same thing, say the same thing in Ghana. Kampe, yes. Do just remain there on this. Kampe, do, just no move. No move. You know the move. You just remain in the same place. Because it is the truth. So the truth is not dependent on whether you change your opinion or you don't change it. So when you know the truth, the only thing you can do with truth is not to argue with it. The only thing you can do with the truth is to subject yourself to it and submit yourself to it and cancel your own opinion and embrace the truth. That's why he said, take the truth, tie it to your neck and don't depart from it. Tie it, tie them. Tie truth to your neck, to your hand, to your everywhere. You must, you must become one. What that means is that you must become one with the truth. Once you discover truth, subject yourself to it. Submit yourself. The truth must be greater than you. The truth must have greater authority than you. The truth must have greater power over you than you. So you are not the last one who has the right opinion. Or to take the right decision. Or, you know, everybody says, my, <clears throat> I take the last decision. Or in families especially, husbands say, I have the right to take the last, I'm the head of the family. I take the right position. I mean, the right decision or the last decision. But in the, in the, in the truth of the case is that truth must always take the last de decision. If you are a person of truth, truth must always take the, right, the, the last decision. So, when it comes to truth that you believe or that you know or that you express, you, anytime you come across, across truth, you must consciously, each time, take a decision to abide and to submit to, that, to the truth and to surrender to the truth. That is why if you are somebody that does not live by the principle of being in the here and now, and if you have people who have not bought my book, How to Be in the Here and Now, then you, you have a challenge with truth. It doesn't matter even if you are a pastor or you sleep in church or you are a believer all your life. If you don't know how to live in the here and now, you cannot live by the truth. You will only be a biomass. For example, let me give you an example. Can you come? You are a young, beautiful lady, so let me use you as an example. <clears throat> you are 20, 25. Okay, you are, uh, Julie is 25 years old. And the reality of life is that every young girl like that, when they are 25, 
they begin to think about marriage. That's the reality. So, if she is not living in the conscious, in the consciousness of being in the here and now, she will be troubled by now. Or she will begin to think very seriously about that right now. Or she will be spending a considerable amount of her time getting, you know, consumed by that. You know why? Because she is not even going to be interested in what the truth is about life or about her. And the truth about life really is marriage is not important. That's the real truth about life. The truth about life is that you can be as happy if you are married and as happy if you are not married. Let me tell you even more truth about life. <laughs> the truth about life is this, that let me be conservative and say 50%, I wanted to say 80%, but 50% at least of people who are going to marry or have been married, they will never be happy in it. That's the truth. So, and this person and every other person who wants to marry, they are living in illusion. That, ah, no. But they know it's not true that everybody will be happy. But, because they are biomasses, they are not in the here and now. And if you are not in the here and now, you don't analyze. If you are not in the here and now, you don't do critical thinking. If you are not in the here and now, you don't weigh every decision. If you are not in the here and now, you don't consider every single moment before you take a decision. You only take that decision because people are pushing you from the back. Mama, papa, grandmother, grandfather, your, uh, the public, uh, relatives, you know, boys, men. Because they are pushing you and you are a biomass, you just have to you just enter into it. But let me tell you another truth about, about marriage. And this you'll be scared. 50% of all people who marry, they don't have anything to do with it. They shouldn't even ever consider it in the first place. All people you know in the West world though, who are married, though, 50% of them, they were not even supposed to bother themselves in the first place about it at all. They are just supposed to live their life and enjoy and go to heaven. <laughs> they are not even supposed to think about it for one minute. Because, and the other 50% that will marry, even the ones who marry and who are supposed to think about it, only 10% of them will be truly happy. Mm. All the rest, they will just be torturing them each other before they die. <laughs> <laughs> they will just, uh, that, is, that is just the plain truth that nobody will tell you. Okay. Now, so who are the people? Now? <laughs> but you see, the truth, nobody wants to know. <laughs> and you know the reason why nobody wants to know the truth? And the reason why nobody wants to know the truth is simple. Because they don't think deeply and in details. They are not living in the here and now. They live according to what is happening. That is how life is. That's what they say. So, now, what is the difference? Do you mean, Pastor Sonny, when I talk like that, they say, ah, but the Bible says, no, no, the Bible says, no, man, uh, no, should not, oh, it's not good for man to be alone. But who said alone? I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm with her now, I'm not alone now, but she's not my wife. What, what makes you to think that it has to be sexual? What's your problem? You have disease there? Or addiction? So, if, <laughs> you have trouble? <laughs> it's like seeing any woman you see, it has to be sex. That's what, if you are, if the Bible says it's not good to be alone, and you immediately think about sex, marriage, so anyone you see now, it has to be that direction alone. Are you sick? We have some psychiatric hospital around here. <laughs> so, being not alone doesn't have to be sexual. And what's wrong with you? Make you relax. Be human first. It's talking about isolation. It's talking about loneliness. It's talking about being in community. It's talking about fellowship. It's talking about relationship. No, a lot of things. 
But pastors, they don't preach the thing. Bah. They don't over preach that thing. Pastors have they have over preached that passage as marriage alone. So even if you try to question it, you are in trouble. <laughs> Nobody will try to question that that is about marriage. They're just talking about being not being alone. That's it. So so who are the people then, if all these statistics are right, that all these people are not even supposed to think about it, and the ones who think about it will not be happy in it. So who are the ones that will be happy in it? The only people who are qualified to even think about marriage are people who have learned to walk in the truth of what they know. And there is no way you could walk in the truth of what you know if you are not in the here and now. So, for you to even be to even be having chance to be successful in marriage, you must be so conscious. You must live out of conscious, active consciousness. And that means that you analyze every detail. You consider everything. But most importantly, you have made yourself a personality. You have delivered yourself from biomass tendencies. You have become a total personality self-sufficient. So you are not going there to become a uh, parasite on her. Yes, a, a load. So that you are expecting her to, to be feeding off her feeling. Or feeding off of her time. Or feeding off of her, you know, good look. Or feeding off of her body, her ear, her leg, her feet, her whatever. You know, but you will be going out there to know that you are all filled by yourself. You are all, you know, you are all satisfied and when you go she's all satisfied as well then you are full two full people two full personality then you don't draw and you know try to arm each other and suck each other dry you are complementing each other and the reason the reason i know that only 10 percent of people will be as happy as that those are the only people who will be happy but the only i know that only 10 10 percent of people who can will be able to attain that level is because I know the amount of people who are biomasses. They don't have time. Why should I, when I can see, I like Kadazi. I have feelings for her. But it's not by feeling, though. No. If I only fools marry by feelings. Yeah. And only fools fall in love. God. <laughs> I've even written a book. Only fools fall in love. It's in Russia. Maybe I have to translate it to English. Yeah. Only fools fall in love. You don't, you don't fall in love. You love, but you don't fall into it. <laughs> Aha. Aha. Huh? We have to put it in English? <laughs> Only fools fall in love. Only bow masses fall in love. That, this, that even expression belongs to biomasses. It doesn't belong to people who walk out of consciousness. Love has to be calculative. Love has to be conscious decision and calculated decision, calculative steps. So it is either you fall in love or you calculatively marry somebody. So some people say, ah, if you calculate, ah, does he have a car or does he have uh, something that it is bad? What I tell people in my church is that if you don't calculate, don't call me for consultation. <laughs> me, I know they. <laughs> I know they. That means I am not available. <laughs> Think with your head. But some people, biomasses will tell you, when it comes to love, you don't think. You just, your heart goes, uh-huh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh-huh, mm-hmm. They have gone and come back. <laughs> that is why the statistics, there are eight out of ten divorces in the world. Because people are falling in love. They are following their heart. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. They have gone and they have come back. <laughs> And then some of them are doing the second time, third time, and they are still forever. Why? Because you don't, you don't love. At, I mean, you don't marry out of, out of passion, out of emotions. You don't know, no. You set separate emotions first of all, yeah. and put in raw logic 
and put in full black active consciousness and make all calculations. What are the things that I can deal with? What are the things that I cannot deal with? What are the things that I can, you know, that is, I can see the end of it? What are the things I cannot see the end of it? You want that book? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't want... <laughs> Thank you, thank you. You can sit down. <laughs> Deliverance session. Eh? Objectivism of the truth. Object. So that's why I say if you want to marry, you don't fall in love. Because if you fall in love, it's subjective. It's not objective. You have to look for objective factors. Not subjectivism of my feelings. My... Because feelings is all subjective. Falling in love is all subjective. So it will be like you are in, in Ukraine, yeah, we say Americanski Gorki, Kasheli, you know. It's like, what do you call American, the thing that you, you know, we, is, you don't call America, but entertainment center, we had kids, you know, they jump, the Sydney land or something, huh? No, no, where you jump, what are the things you, swings, not just swings, but the ones that go, carousel or what? You call it roller coaster? You sit down and he's taking you. Uh-huh. Is that the marriage you want? Uh-huh. 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 Yeah, you follow emotions. That is the marriage you will reap. That is what you will reap. Is your call roller coaster? I never go like roller coaster. I never rode in one. I said, no. I, I have my head. Without Eddie is better than with Eddie. And I don't like fear, so I'm not going there. <laughs> so if you are going to do subjective you no know, love, that's the, you, are, you, are, you are ordering for roller coaster love. But if you are going to be objective, sit down. The Bible, Jesus said it. If you want to take any decision, if you want to build anything, you want to build any house, or you want to go to war, anything that was building, it should be built by wisdom. And what does that mean? It says you must first of all sit down. That means cool down your emotions. Let the emotion set yourself free from. Oh. <laughs> and then put down the calculation. Ah. Because family must be built. You don't build by emotions. You must build by raw logic and, you know, principles. yeah, principles. Objective truth is what you build on, not emotions and feelings. That's the truth, isn't it? That's why anyone that wants to marry now, I send them to my YouTube page. Go listen to those messages. You don't listen to it, you pay the price. But don't call me. Oh. <laughs> because if you don't listen to it, it, yeah. Because I have about men there, about women, about marriage. Go get the facts right. Go write them down and make the calculations. On point one, point two, and on the right hand side, make a list. Make a comparative uh, analysis. Of her, of you. If you don't do that, well, roller coaster is waiting in front. It's just there. <laughs> we call it here. Yeah, we call it American roller coaster, American lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they call it in Ukraine. American lifestyle. Ooh, no break. You can't stop in the middle. <laughs> you can't change your mind. <laughs> you can't change your mind in the middle. And you can't jump off. <laughs> if you try to jump off that thing, you jump into death. <laughs> if that's the kind of marriage you want, congratulations. <laughs> Subjective truth or versus objective truth. Me, I will 
pitch my tent with the object, objective truth rather than subjective truth. Fall in love is subjective truth. It's not, object, it's not objective, it's subjective truth. Hmm? It's like, it's like uh, you are a little bit uh, excited about this thing. <laughs> uh, Psalms um, 96 verse 13 says, <laughs> Psalm 96 verse 13 says, for he is coming. For he is coming to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. That's why everybody must be subjective about the truth. You must subject yourself to the truth because it is that truth that will judge you at the end of the day. Since the truth is what is coming to judge the earth and the peoples, that is why even the Islam, the Muslim people, God will judge them at the end of the day by the truth. How were they committed to life, truthful lifestyle? And people who are in church who say they believe, but they are not walking in truth, bad news. All of them. Will be. So the only thing you can do about truth is just sub, go and submit. Just lie down. I, 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 sub, I submit. Because that is what God is going to use to judge. That's why Jesus said, I will not judge anybody. Ah, how can you? You will not judge anybody. Are you not Jesus? He said, no. The word that I speak, my word is the truth. That is this word, the truth that will judge people. So, no truth. That's why when you go to churches, eh? And you hear all kind of ministers just saying any kind of thing anyhow. No relationship with the truth. Even their lifestyle, they are not even... And the statement they are making, the, the, uh, the, uh, the declarations they are saying, nothing about truth. And you are going to subject yourself to that? And you say, oh yeah, it is his problem. You know, God will judge you. So you are subjecting yourself to subjective, because you are saying it is it's a problem. It, is, it means he is subjective about truth. So where will subjective truth lead you? Only absolute truth is truth. Then you have to end up where his subjectivity will lead him, because that's his own opinion or his own subjective view. Romans 3, 4 says, Certainly not. Indeed, let God be true, but every man a liar. So, doesn't matter what your opinion is, God will at the end of the day be true. So, in every situation, let God be true. And every man a liar. You have to make yourself a liar. If there is any conflict or there is any decision to be made concerning the truth, you have to agree that, yes, I am the one who is wrong. Or man is the one who is wrong. But God is not a liar. The word of God is true. So let all men be lie. Let every man be a lie. I mean, let God be true, but every man a liar. Isaiah 43, 9 says, Let all the nations be gathered together, and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this, and show us former things, let them bring out their witnesses that they may be justified. Or let them hear and say it is true. Give, bring your evidences. Prove you cannot do anything against the truth. You have to submit and say, yes, this is true. Psalm 145 verse 18. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. You see what matters? Some people say, no, you must not be a sinner. If you are a sinner, God will not hear you. Well, all of us were sinners. But you know at what point God heard us and saved us? When we truly, from our heart, call upon him. That's what we call salvation. Oh. Truth is what brings about salvation. 
And it doesn't matter, even before you came to salvation, there were thousands or hundreds or instances when you didn't know the Lord, but you call upon him in truth. Before you got saved, and God delivered you, he helped you. Remember, everybody has such instances, even though you are not a believer. And have you ever heard people say, God doesn't hear unbelievers? Or he doesn't hear sinners? If he doesn't hear sinners, how did you get here? <laughs> because you call, call upon him, he has heard you now. It is truth that matters. So when you pray, it is not the cha 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 Or how many hours in the ninth vigil? It is not the pronunciation. It's, it's not, because if you are paying attention to the pronoun, no, to the to the words you are saying, and if you are laying emphasis on the type of prayer, you know people write prayers out now. This is the prayer for this, this is the prayer for this. It is that is called incantations. What is incantation? Incantations are things that you already knew what to say. You know, it was it is either written now or learned earlier on. <laughs> So we are reading incantation back to God. But what is really needed is one thing. Truth. The, 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 the collision and agreement of your heart with whatever you are saying to him. That truthfulness. When you call upon him in truth is always near, here. Near and answered. Those people who call upon him. It is, you know, most of the prayers that are answered are the prayers that are called out of desperation. Because that is what expresses truth in us. And that is why when you come to churches, the people who have the most miracle are the, unbeliev are the unbelievers or new converts. Or new believers. Because they are still in working in truth. But the ones who have become experts. <laughs> <laughs> Professionals. And the prayer warriors. They have to go to the pastor. <laughs> they have to go to the bar of God because they are no more working in truth they have compromised, compromised left and right and center and they are just saying words that they have already learned earlier on incantation instead of truth First John 1 John 1.6 1 John 1, 6 says, if we say that we have fellowship with him, if you say you have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice, you do not have the truth in us. You say it's about truth. If you, walk, if you say you know him and you are not reflecting him, you don't know him more. You just lie. It's all about truth. You know, if there is anything that matters in Christian life, just like I told you about life on earth, the most important thing in life, the most important word you must learn when it comes to life on earth, efficient and successful life on earth is conversion. But the most important word you will learn ever in your life when it comes to walk with God and to relationship with God, personal, no, relationship with God is truth. Faith depends on it. Holiness depends on it. Acceptance depends on it. Righteousness depends on it. Everything comes out of it. And it is so sad how few people talk about it. And how little people talk about truth. You don't ever even hear people talk about truth. They relegated it to somewhere there. Because you cannot even love if not it's in truth. You can only love in truth. You cannot even get saved without truth. You cannot even worship God without truth. Because such are the worshippers he's looking for, those who worship him in spirit and truth. And you will not even guess that this is the most important one single word in Christianity. You will never hear it anywhere else. They will tell you any kind of word, but not truth. <laughs> mm. 
Hosea 4, 1 says, Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel, for the Lord brings a charge against the inhabitants of the land. What is the charge God is bringing against the world? If any time God is bringing a charge against the world, anybody, it is only about one thing. It's not because you are seeing now, it's because you are denying it. You are not walking in line with the truth. If you are not denying yourself, if you are confessing your sin and you are truthful about it, that's what we call salvation. That brings you to salvation. But because you are not walking in truth, it says there is no truth or mercy or knowledge of the Lord in the land. There is no truth, no mercy, no knowledge of the Lord. It starts with the truth. When there is no, mercy, there is no truth anywhere, God begins to be agitated. And he says he will bring charge against the inhabitants of the land because there is no truth. So I see people try to reform a nation or try to change their country and they don't even want to emphasize truth. They have not even started. That is the most important thing. The four cornerstone that needs to first of all be emphasized and elevated. Truth must be elevated above all things. Romans 1, 24, 25 says, Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for the lie. You don't compromise truth. So all those people who are saying relativism of truth, oh, the truth is relative. Oh, it's our own opinion. We are gay or we are this. Or, you know, they exchanged the truth of God. For a lie. That is the only thing God has against people. What do you do with truth? Because truth is, that's why God gave everybody a conscience. For you to not to live by the truth, it has to be by choice. Why? So that when God will send you to hell, even your own conscience is witnessing that it's right. Oh. <laughs> It is the only thing that is already established and built into you. So that you not say you didn't know. You could say, oh, I didn't hear the gospel before. But the conscience witnesses to the truth in you. So if you are a lover of truth, we will know. God will know. <laughs> That's why there is nothing anybody can do against the truth. Only for the truth. But it is not that you, you, you are going to be perfect, but at least tell the truth to, to God. Not to man, maybe, but to God. That's what God desires. Tell him the truth. That's why when God, Jesus was praying for his disciples before he left the world, you know what he prayed? He said, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is the truth. That's the only concern he had. He said, don't take them out of this world, though. Don't take them out of this world. Let them be in the world. I send you here just like you sent me. But sanctify them. Truth. Let them have the sanctity of truth. Let them respect truth. Let them hold truth in high esteem. If they will be able to do that, I don't worry. I can go now. Objectivism of the truth. It has to be objective. It cannot be queried or questioned. So let me hear what you people have to say about what you've heard today. I hope you are learning one or two things. Come forward, come forward. Come forward, let's hear your, let's hear your opinion about it. You are afraid so that they don't see your shoulder? No, no. 
no, no, I was feeling <laughs> cold. Ah, okay, okay. I'm free. I thought you decided to succumb to subjectivity no, no, no. of truth. No. Is that the objectivity of truth? No. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's why God said the objectivity of truth is that God looks at the heart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you look at the body, you'll be subjective. Yeah. <laughs> That's the truth right there. If you look at the body, it's subjective. But if you do like God and look at the heart, you are free. Amen. I am it's free from that. Yeah. That's why I wear things I love wearing. I yeah. don't care yeah. about whatever yeah. anybody says. Yeah. Blessed are those pure in heart, for they shall see God. Yep. Uh, what got me today started from yesterday. When you say that if you know the truth, you don't even need to pray. Yeah. That really Just hits me. Just walk that truth. Yeah. yeah. But though most of us, we say, what a heresy. You know, this is an, uh, you know, it's an abomination or blasphemy, you know, that he's saying again, you shouldn't pray. But if you know the truth, the only prayer that I can actually do is, Lord, what can I do for you? Nothing else. Or I worship you. But the prayers that we make is just, I don't even know what to call them, you know, after hearing this series. The prayers that we hear, we make in church. And the prayer points, it's just filled with nonsense, you know. But if you know the truth, you don't even need to pray. You yep. just be walking in it. Yeah. And that's exactly what DSA does. Maybe most of you don't know. <laughs> you, you needed to see us this morning going for a walk. DSA and his family went for a walk, and we followed. Everybody in the house that cared to go went. I've been thinking about this, this whole, you know, the whole day, you know, the simplicity, this freedom of being in the truth to allow anybody, the cuckoo, the cleaner, you want to go for a walk, we're going together, he's interacting with anybody. Where do you see people of his level do this? Yeah. This is the freedom that the truth gives you. Yeah. This is the freedom which is the truth, which is the love of God. God is truth, he is love. That is what it gives you. And as I watch and I learn, you know, it's, it's just, it's amazing. It's, over, it's just overwhelming to me. I've been, you know, just thinking of the thing in this. Everybody, we are like about, I don't know, 25 people or 15 people. I don't know how many we were. All together, just, some other people will say, where are you going to? Go and clean the house or whatever, you know. You know how we talk back home, you know, when you're the G.O. What is the... <laughs> No, it's sickening. It's sickening. But the humility and I don't even know the compassion, the love, or even thinking about this house. What made a man to build this thing? Because he's just thinking about somebody else. He thought of all of us before he built this house. You can stay in the comfort of your own apartment and have your own privacy. You know, I was chatting with somebody in the kitchen yesterday. It's like, in this house self, you don't even see each other. We are all together, but you have your own privacy. But it takes the truth to come out with this kind of plan, to think that, you know, think ahead. When he saw this HMT, I don't even know which year it was, to build this, you know, thing that you just come and feel a piece of heaven. I repeat, I'm married, I have children, but when I come here, I don't know, I don't know anything. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't feel... I don't even care about those things. I don't care about, my, you know that I don't care about my children, but I forget I'm married, I forget <laughs> that I have children, I don't want to go anywhere. Because it's a piece of heaven to me. Because there's so much freedom here that, there's so much truth there that is in the air. You know, it's, I don't know, it takes, it takes me up. Each time I enter this gate, you know, that presence of the truth, which is the Lord, just takes you. And all you want to think about is what to do for him. That's the only thing in my head. Children, you've what eaten. What to do for God. Yeah, what to do for God. Children, have you, kitchen is there for you to eat. You don't need me. You're all grown. You're not toddlers anymore. So I can just think of focus. Husband, you don't also need me. You're a grown man. You understand? <laughs> And he too is he too has to please God. Yes, and he too is doing his own thing. He does he doesn't he has no problem me coming here. And that is the kingdom. When Pastor Sunday says that, you know, only ten percent of people are truly married, he knows what he's saying. Because I, I also do what's it called, relationship counseling. And a lot of people are in mystery. 
because they just, I did, to thank God for the truth now that has delivered me, so I know now how to do marriage, what to do. But we all fall in nonsense we call love, you know. Then when you get in there, your eyes will open, and you don't know where to run to, and you keep on running to another love, another love, but none of them is found. Love is found nowhere. So the thing that caught me is truth. If you know the truth, you don't even need to pray. You just move in it. It's just like a presence that carries you everywhere you go. You just find yourself just doing things just to please him. That is my take. <laughs> Who is the best one? Um, I want to say that I, I feel like um, I have uh, butterflies in my tummy. Like this. <laughs> That's how I feel. Really, I feel. It's yes. It's so. What does that? What does that mean? It's it's. Okay, maybe I can try to illustrate. I hear that a lot. That people have butterflies there, but I never experienced it, so I don't know what. <laughs> Yes, I never experienced that feeling. I hear it a lot. But I just wonder, what does that mean? What does, it, what does that feel like? I don't know. Like what? Like car sickness. Yeah? So it's bad. No, 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 no. It's like, uh, it's, 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 it's. it's, it's. <laughs> oh. Yes, yes. I was just going to say, it's almost like I. I'm, I'm traveling for the first time. Ooh. Like I'm sitting in a plane oh, for the first exciting, time. And exciting. yes, yeah. like I'm just, you know, exploring the world and seeing the world for the first time. Mm. I'm just thinking, wow, I was living in this world and I didn't know all of this existed. It's like, you know, so uh, I can't even, oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's so much. And there was one thing I was thinking about when you were talking about the words and that, you know, especially men of God, they just speak those words. They don't really mean anything and we don't assess what they say. I was thinking that as a religious person, I used to always think my assignment is to make someone say these words, to accept Jesus <laughs> as the Lord no. and Savior. Yes. You I was think like that? Yes. No. Yes. I was thinking they just have to say these words and then... <laughs> My job is done, you know. I can go to bed. I, can, I don't have to worry anymore. And now I'm just thinking, I was just wasting my time, especially with people who actually were already walking in the truth. And right now I just realized this person was probably already saved, more saved than I was, wow. trying to make them say these words. But you want him to be religious? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just so, I don't know. I, I, I can't even put it into words. I'm just so overwhelmed. And I feel like this is all I always needed. This is just, I mean, one thing that Maya was said uh, two days ago, I think, was that she's also very overwhelmed and she doesn't even know what to start. And I was just looking at her thinking, yes, exactly. But, you know, when Pastor then continued talking, I was thinking, it doesn't even matter what is happening around us, you know. We we just have to do one thing: just Commitment look. Commitment to truth. Only yes. one thing. Just look at God and do you what know, He's what doing. What about deliverance? About yeah. demons? About just walking through. Yes. You don't need to bother yourself about how long to pray out. Just walking through to God. Yeah. And I was. I mean, there's so many people that I met who were walking in truth, but because of my religiosity. I was blinded by this. I was thinking, oh yeah, this person is good, but there's still something missing, you know. They have to say these words, they have to come to church. And instead of me learning, instead of me observing the truth, you know, so that, I don't know. There's just so much I, I'm thinking of, so many things that I did that were just wrong. And that I didn't, I, f I felt I was right. I just felt I was right. I was doing the right thing. I was walking in truth. You know, I was pleasing God. And all these people, they just didn't know. I was pitying them, even though I was the one to be pitied. Yeah. So, it's just, I'm so grateful. I mean, I, I can't even, 
I was thinking about what to, because of all these kingdom fruits, I'm thinking, oh, what should I do? What should I say? There's so much I want to say. And since we started with this truth series, I just have all the material. Everything I need to talk about is in this teaching. Everything. Everything I was thinking about. Every time Pastor's talking, I just get ideas. All the time I write things down. All the topics, they just flow. It's so. Thank you, Pastor. I'm just. If you have not yet shared, if you have not yet shared the message, please go ahead and share the video. Please look for the share button and go ahead and share the message. And everybody that is watching at home, my appeal to you: write your opinion. We, we don't just want to express our opinion here for you to listen. We want to exp- you to also share your opinion so that we might listen and learn from you and read from you and hear what you have to say. So please express your opinion. Tell us what you think and what, uh, you know, what you are feeling right now. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, I want to thank you for the word for the day. And we have t- uh, today we have been uh, talking about that we should learn to recognize uh, the times and special moments like momentums that God gives to us. And I recognize that, that there is now a special time for repentance. Mm. And uh, I want to share one uh, place from the scripture. It's uh, Jeremiah 31 and 22. Uh, this is actually about when God was talking, uh, talking to uh, Israel, but it can also be written to us. How long will you waver and hesitate to return, O you backsliding daughter? For the Lord has created a new thing in the land. A female shall compass a man. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, this is a Bible verse that took uh, quite a lot of time for me to understand the end of this. And I, I'm kind of old-fashioned, and <laughs> I think like a female shall compass a man. Like I think that's not even biblical. <laughs> like <laughs> I'm not that kind of a woman that I think that I should be running after men. But it should be like the other oh. way around. And I was why? Why is God saying this? And then uh, it was open to me that like. The pride of Christ is like going around him and asking, tell me your will that I can do it. We are the bride of Christ. And then one way to describe the word compass is to protect and we supposed to be protectors of the truth. Brilliant. And, uh, Brilliant. and when Jesus uh, were teaching, uh, or was, was teaching uh, about how we should behave, he said, when your enemy uh, slapped slaps you on the cheek, you can turn the other. But on the other hand, in the other context, he said, if I am talking the truth, why do you hit me then? Mm. So we could like, think that what, what he was doing, he was uh, like protecting. S- protecting the truth. And so now we're supposed to be doing the same for him because we're supposed to bring these uh, laws and principles of heaven, of the kingdom, to this earth and protect him for his sake. He is not here to do it. It's now our time. Beautiful. Beautiful. And then there was other thing with this, like, completely different that came into my mind. This is kind of lighter. (laughs) 
So when you were talking about um, when people are wondering, wondering if God can hear them or, or not. So I don't know if you have heard about the, like a story of a woman who went to see her pastor because she had been praying and praying and praying and God didn't answer. So the woman became desperate and, and uh, she went to pastor and said, Oh, pastor, can you please help me? I have been so much praying and she was crying. And she said, but God doesn't hear me. I have prayed, but God doesn't hear me. So the pastor said, don't worry, go home and curse God. <laughs> so the woman started to be afraid. Oh, pastor, how can you say that? I cannot do that. Then the pastor said, well, why do you say so? Because God can hear it. <laughs> Please, while we are waiting for the next testimony, I want to challenge, I mean, challenge all the people online to write their own stories. Write your testimony. Write what you are feeling, what you are experiencing right now, what you have learned from this world, and what is happening to you. Could you write that right now to us? Write your, write your opinion. Write your feelings. Write your impressions and what, what, whatever you think that God is telling you right now. I think... Um, like Julie Jell, like I like to call her, I am feeling so overwhelmed because, especially, I don't know whether you may not understand because, you know, I've been a Christian for 30 years and I've seen a lot. Let's say I've, I've you know, bought the t-shirt. I've been around ministries, you name it. And this is, it is like having the rug pulled from under you. Mm. Everything that you've known to be, this, this is what makes it very um, sobering. So I'm being real with you. I'm, I'm in a sober mode here. I'm in a reflective mode because, yes, I'm a reflective person and I'm a deep thinker and I'm processing everything. So it's just like everything that you've known to be truth has been pulled from under you. So what are you holding on to? You know, because everyone holds on to, onto something. And especially if you've, you've, you've held on to something for so long a time and then, you know, you're being introduced. So let's, let, me, let, let me give an, um, an example. So let's say, <clears throat> let's say, Anastasia and myself, all, all my life I have been raised up to believe that I'm an orphan. And so I've lived in poverty all of my life. So what are my belief systems? My belief systems that, you know, I'm, I don't have anybody, I don't have access to uh, the riches or the wealth. All I know is poverty, depravity, you name it, you name all the things that come with being an orphan. And then let's fast forward, let's say 50 years, 50 years down the line. What do I discover? What do I discover? I discover that I'm a princess, that my father is the king, and let's say my mother is the queen and I have access to all wealth. And that my, my, my father, who's the king, he is the most amazing personality. His, his, his values are righteousness, justice, truth. His love knows no bounds. He doesn't judge people. He accepts the poor. He institutes a welfare system for the poor. Love is, love is purity. Love is forgiveness. There's no relatives in everything about him is absolute. You know, there's no, as um, uh, Nigerians say, there's no shaking here. Everything is concrete. It is solid. Do you know what that, do you, uh, try, uh, try to think about what does that do for that person? So let's be real here. What, that, what does that do to your mind or for everything that you've known? You know, that person will go through, um, I, don't want, I don't want to use the word trauma because God does not traumatize people. Daddy God does not traumatize, but you will, you will go through some, what's the word? 
Um, you know, when a, a caterpillar is transforming from, what is it, from the, what's it called? The pupa to the, there is some, there is some stress and something. So I think that, I don't know about you, but I think that we are in a very, we are in, uh, um, in very important times. We are in a transitional uh, period. The church is a tr in a transitional period. So uh, for those of you who are watching, you may be experiencing a lot of um, doubt and you're just, you know, confusion. Not that God is not confusing you. It's because he's transitioning from lies to the truth. And th that transition is not easy, you know, especially when your mind has been wired a certain way for a long time. And this, you've known this truth to be, this lie to be the truth, and the truth you're not being introduced to, to what is the truth. It can, the process can be um, quite challenging, you know. So for you, for you to now learn, so let's say, for example, you've been paralyzed all your life, or you think you're paralyzed and they get to discover that you're actually you're not, you're not paralyzed. So what do they do? Somebody has to begin to train you to develop those <laughs> muscles that you think that are, are not working, working or whatever. So you need to learn to begin to walk in the truth, and that takes time. That, you know, that transition from getting rid of the junk to now seeing uh, Daddy God for who he really, really, really is. Right now, I just feel like, you know, I'm having, an, I'm having a serious encounter with Jesus, the truth, you know. <clears throat> I beg your pardon. I just feel like, um, it, I just feel like um, it's almost as if uh, Jesus, the truth, is, is standing right in front of me. He's standing right in front of me. And Glory he is, God. you know, taking my hand. And we are, we are, we are walking. We, we're, we're now, it's like we're now in um, nursery school. We're nursery school. So all the ones that I thought for 30 years that I've, you know, I've graduated, graduated maybe to university, that one is all gone. So now we're starting afresh from the beginning. And we're now taking a, a slow, gradual walk, you know, with, into the kingdom. And as much as the kingdom is uh, absolute and all the rest and is beautiful, it is because the light is shining brighter. It's shining very bright. And so, you know, like the other day I said, so you're walking with him and you're looking around and you're going, wow. But at the same time, you're like, I, how come I never saw all this all these years? How come I never saw this? How come I never saw that? How come, you know, I think um, the deepest thing that is happening in my heart is um, encountering absolute truth rather than relatives in and all the rest. Because I'm so used to... Um, I'm so used to what is not the truth. And it's been, it's been a way of life. It's so easy. I mean, it's, 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 it's endemic. It's everywhere. It's in the church. You name it. It's everywhere. That is, that is, that is reality. And um, uh, to have truth, because you know t truth is very pure. It is extremely pure. Do you understand that? It is extremely pure, and it, it, um, it reveals things in your heart, everything about you. And um, like Dr. Sanders taught us, you can, you can not only, the only thing you can do is to bow down to the truth, to bow down. And all that, it, you know, it is very sobering and it, it, it takes a lot of humility to say that I was wrong. I am totally wrong. I am wrong. And that's why somebody was talking about repentance here. Repentance is you when you're facing the truth and you say, all that I know, I didn't know it. It's, it's not. And um, Daddy God, let's start again. Let's start. Let's, let's start this journey. Mm -hmm. Let's start all again. I mean, I'm just, I'm just like you. I'm just overwhelmed. <laughs> I'm just overwhelmed by his love. Well, the fact that um, his mercy has kept us to date, right? His mercy. He didn't let us die in, in our ignorance. You know, we could have died and gone to hell. We could have died thinking that, you know, we have it. We've got salvation and everything. 
and end up in hell. But hopefully, um, we all are making adjustments and um, we are all going to learn what it is step by step to, to, to walk in the truth. And not only that, we're going to be bold and defiant and uphold the truth. Our children need to see what the truth is. I just sent my son this message and I said he needs to listen to this because there's so much that they can, you know, in it. So the reason why I'm talking, talking the way I'm talking, I don't want to talk what DSA said. I want you to know what is going on in my heart, how I'm feeling, <laughs> what he's doing. And, and that is what we need people to say and people who are watching us right now, you need to express not repeating what I said, but what is going on, your feelings. Yes. The feelings that are going What's going on in your heart right now? Even those who are here, what's going on in you, in your emotions? What are you feeling? Yes, so thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sene de Legend. <laughs> you know, that's why he says that, buy the truth. Anything you can buy in this world, buy the truth. And send it. With your life by that's the same thing like Jesus said, the man who found a field by the kingdom. Yeah. It's like the kingdom. Yeah. By the truth. The truth is God. Yeah. God is truth. God is the kingdom. Yes, sir. I'd just like to say a very big thank you to you because I see these teachings as the foundations and pillars of life, of how of how we should live our lives. But one thing that really struck me is the fact that we speak about the truth, but then I realize there's a price to pay for the truth. Be. Because the truth will not come very easy, Ooh. you know. And um, I said that because I think throughout my life, I think I came to a crossroad about three years ago when I finally found my dad. Okay. And um, the funny thing was, if I was in back home and he was in Ukraine, I'll sort of understand that, okay, he was far That's away. Far. But then he was only 15 minutes walk away. Hmm. <laughs> Our paths crossed so many times, no sign, okay. Now, when the truth came out, I was really angry. But then, I just had to go to God and ask God, <laughs> just give me the heart you know, to really deal with this issue. And I had to go back to him, and I told him one thing. I said, I forgive you. It was very difficult, very painful, but I had to abide by the truth. Mm. Because in my, place of, in my place of prayer with God, so far as I was concerned, his sin was even greater than Adam's. But then God reminded me, that my sin was greater than his. And the same way God had forgiven me, I had to forgive him, you know. So I told him, I forgive you. But then, we said, faith without works is also dead. Mm. Fortunately for me, in about three months, he was having his birthday party. Okay, so just to demonstrate that forgiveness, I told um, him and the other children, that apart from the food, Leave everything to me. Wow. Birthday card, venue, the band, any expense apart from the food. No. The, the other four of you can take care of the food. Leave the rest to me. And that was exactly what I did. The only thing I refused to do was to attend the birthday party. <laughs> you know, because one, I had just come back from home, calls, everything, but then I felt I, I had actually demonstrated that yeah. forgiveness. Yeah. You know, in action, in action, you know, and um, he calls me about four or five times a week, you know. And anytime I see his call, you know, I just look at at times I'll see his call, and my wife will ask, you, ask me, Are you not picking up? I said, I'll pick up in this one time because I realize I don't know whether it's because of guilt, that's why he keeps calling, you know. But then I just wanted him to know that, look, I have forgiven you, you know. So I realized that, you know, as much as we speak about the truth, the truth will definitely come at a cost. Mm -hmm. And we must be prepared to pay that price. Brilliant. Brilliant.
There's just one thing that I, I want to say um, regarding truth. As Pastor was saying, and I'm thinking and meditating on what he's saying, and I realize that this um, subjective truth is one of the reasons why we're so divided in the body of Christ. Oh, yeah. Because every church so has got their own truth. Yeah. You know, you, the, truth in, <laughs> the truth in church A is different from the truth in church B. And that's why some of us pastors wouldn't let our members go to another church. Because the other church is not doing or teaching what we feel we are teaching. And we think that our truth is the truth and theirs is not. You see, and this is really bringing division in the body. And that's why there's some things we're praying for and we really can't see it because we're not united. You know, we've brought we've doc doctrines in the church that is not aligning with the truth. And we're not looking at the universal truth. We're not looking at Christ who is the truth. It doesn't matter where my sister fellowships. You know, Christ died for her. Christ died for me. What unites us is the blood of Jesus Christ. She is my sister. And so I've got to fellowship with her, whether she comes to where I am or not. I was brought up in the church and made to believe that the church that I was going to, if I left that church, I wasn't going to go to heaven because that was the only church that, you know, would produce, would, would, would get, make you go to heaven. We look at some of the lies that we've sat in the church and we've, we've taken things that has got nothing to do with the kingdom. And I really think that it's time for the church really to come back to the truth. Let's forget about doctrines that don't align with what God is saying. Doctrines that don't align with the kingdom, don't align with the truth. We need to put all those aside because we need to remember that we are the body. The, the head needs the hand. The hand needs the feet. The feet needs the heart. We, and we've got to be supplying each other. But if we are not in that position where we're supplying each other, then honestly, that church is a cult, like Pastor was saying. You know, so the, the truth indeed, indeed is objective. And my prayer really is that, is that we leaders in the church, that we will get this and understand that it is not about what I think, but it is what the kingdom, it is about the kingdom. It is about what the Lord is saying. Amen. What I got from this message, um, well, I, I'm going to say in the last three days or three nights, um, listening these messages about truth, well, my mindset has been changed and revolutionized, and I'm still digesting the message. And today I'm going to try to give a very humble opinion from my heart, what I feel about this, especially when, when we... Um, put this out there, but not just to talk about churches, governments, society in general, but ourselves. I think any change has to start in our own heart to digest and embody this message, what truth, what truth means to everyone, and how we can live by that and walk in truth. I remember um, in my young days, uh, once my father was doing a commercial transaction in his business, and, and I criticized him because I thought he was doing not the right thing. And he just answered me back and with a, a nice smile. He was a very lovely man. And he said, son, we did something here that God allows us, and he's given us everything. So what we got now here is the fruits that he's given to us, and that's a blessing. But we need to be a bless to others. Mm -hmm. So that way, whatever God is producing has to be in advantage of everyone, not just for us. By then, I didn't understand that very well. 
and I'm still criticizing him, but through these messages, I think it's living the truth, walking the truth, because everything comes from God. And if we are in his image and likeness, we are that truth. And we need to walk that truth and reflect that truth in every step we do in life. My concern on this is that while we are talking here about churches and governments and society, but really how this message can be put out there to impact people. Because no everyone is going to be committed but I think we are here, and I think that's the message that I would like to set here. History makers have that equipment to go out and share the message and, and live by the example, mm -hmm. live and walk the, with the kingdom. Amen. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Good evening to those that are watching. Uh, I just want to thank everybody here, and thank you, Pastor Sunday, Pastor Derek, uh, Philip, uh, Miss uh, Boss Lady. We thank you so much. And uh, actually, I just want to tell you how I feel right now. I feel sad. I feel bad. I have this pain and anguish and in my are, heart. And people are writing the same thing right now that they are feeling bad that they didn't know this thing. Yeah. At the same time, you know, every time I listen to the, to the teachings, even when I'm, I'm, I'm in, uh, back home in, in Vinita, I feel this pain that how I didn't know all these things. Where have I been? And at the same time, I feel privileged that I get to learn this now. You know? And today, again, when you were talking about the subjectivity and objectivity about marriage, now I have to go back again. <laughs> I have to go back to my tabulation again, <laughs> you know, and you know every time I just my head just get mixed up sometimes I can't really explain it, but it's it's actually helping me, and I'm developing to a better person, and I like it, and I'm learning to to even do sometimes even when I don't feel comfortable doing something, I learn to do it even when I know I'm not benefiting. I do it because, I was, you know, the teachings, are, most of them, at the end of the day, if you look at them, it's all about love. Mm -hmm. You know, and I really thank you for that. And I hope I'm going to make Manambian people proud. And actually, I've been sharing, and some people actually are really happy that I share. And some are annoyed, though, yeah. <laughs> but some, let's say, uh, 30% are really grateful of the, 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 the sharing and stuff. Yeah, yeah they're seeing it. Even back home, they are seeing it. So thank you so now much. It's your responsibility to take charge and take res you know, responsibility over your nation. Yes. You are trusted with it, and I hope you'll be able to be able to have access to keep on watching while you are down. Yeah, yeah. My internet is quite good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hello. I actually feel very happy, especially when uh, Dr. Sunday started the topic on marriage, <laughs> Queen in Kuru knows. And I just want to say to suckers, to all those people that got married. <laughs> and so, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I want to say it again, yes, suckers. Because especially young people, <laughs> Especially young people, you know, and parents out there, I'm sorry, you know, you also, you're in a bad marriage. The marriage didn't work for you. Things is not working out for you, but you have your young ladies especially. And what you say to them is after education, the next thing they need to do is get married. And you don't tell them the truth. Just the basic truth of what you're going through, what's happened to you, how you experience in marriage, what you would have done differently. That would have been enough. But you wouldn't do that. You just push, 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 push the girls along. And for the young people especially, that you know the truth, and because of sex, you go into marriage, because, you, you know, because of all this sin, you're going to commit sin. You know, that's not the truth. So learn this and you know, take hold of the truth. Let the truth be your life. 
I actually feel so liberated because I feel like life really is simple and life is really uh, God's plan, God's love for us. But what we do is we twist everything, we change it and we mess it up and then we deliver something that is not true. But just hearing this message alone and just to live life, all this time that I've been told, oh, you know, married, blah, 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 ha, suckers. <laughs> That's all I want to say. Thank you. Okay, uh, please excuse me for coming again, but you know, my brains were, were not quite working. <laughs> so uh, I forgot something. Um, there was an, one thing more. Uh, the Bible says that uh, when Jesus was on the earth, he was filled with mercy and truth. Yes. So I had a thought that uh, when we speak about people and different kind of people and we speak about or talk about sins and mistakes that people are doing, so maybe it would be good to also show some mercy at yeah, this mercy point. Mercy is better than judgment. Yes, because I just want to say that when we talk, for example, about gays and lesbians, so the Bible doesn't actually say anywhere that it would be a worse sin than some else. <laughs> so if somebody is a liar or if somebody is a thief, if, if somebody is like a pretender, like saying to someone else, oh, I love you, you are, you, you are so beautiful. And then she goes home, and then in her heart, she would curse that person. It would be just as bad. So there is a lot of mercy. And none of us is not better than another one. I am not better than someone who is a gay or a lesbian. Yeah. I'm not more valued. Mm. And God was the first one ever who had a thought in his mind that every man is equal to each other. And he has proved it when he sent his son who died on the cross for our sins. Mm. And he didn't die more for someone he didn't give more blood for someone mm -hmm. than some else. He proved himself that all people are equal. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what you have done. You can always come to Jesus. Mm -hmm. We are not here to charge people. We are here to speak the truth. And you are very welcome to Jesus. I'm not better than you. And uh, actually the word of God really says that Jesus loves you more than me. Because he would leave me alone for a while. And he would run to you because he so loves you that he wants you to come to him. Beautiful. Well said. Wow, what a time to be alive. Yeah. What a time to be alive. Yeah. Are you not happy to be alive? <laughs> Wow, 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 wow. This is just deliverance without prayers, without offerings, without special seats. Without dangerous seats. What a time to be alive. I'm saying this because uh, a lot of people are engaging me because I understand the time that this is the time for us to run with the truth. This evening while I, while I was sitting down there, one of the things that comes running to my mind is that 
this word tonight just come to break us down. The purpose for this message tonight is to break us down. That is the purpose of this message tonight. And that links me to the Bible portion that says that that a broken heart and a contrary spirit, that that person, that man, that woman, that God will not despise. And irrespective of who you are or your position, if you are out of a place that the, the truth cannot knock you down, you have placed yourself above, above God and you have rejected that's, that's, God. That's right. And also I see in my Bible, while Paul was saying that we should put on Christ, and he was talking about the truth, that we should put on the truth, which is the embodiment of Christ in us. So to everyone who is watching this message, is, this message is not just coming for you to feel good or to feel excited. This message comes to knock you down. And he has knocked me down. And there are some things that God wants to do in your life. That is why he sent this message to, the, to knock us down so that he can purify us. I don't care what you have done. I don't, I, don't, I don't care. One thing about the truth, one thing about God is that he does not give up on you. He's patiently waiting on you. It's just for you to go into that place of humility and humble yourself and not placing yourself above the truth because we have seen that the truth is above everything. Even God himself had to lift the truth above his name, above his throne. So my brothers, my sister, in your closet, I want you to make this con to, to live in the continuation of this breaking down. Without you breaking down, you will see continue with, 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 with the Jones that we have been taught as, as truth. That I celebrate so much that this is a time that we have cotton, we have, we, we, we've cotton the truth. And my life and my heart has been broken down. And I want yours to be the same. And the body of Christ shall not remain the same. I want to congratulate everyone. And because the purpose of this message, God does not just do, send his word. He says that his word will not return void without accomplishing what it has been sent. So the word of God has come. So the, the fruit of this message, we shall see it in our time. And you will see it in your country. And every one of us, we will see it in our society. Amen. Thank you. Well, thank you so very much, everybody. Thank you so much. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow. Now up to you, Mayowa. Hello, guys. Thank you, everyone. Hello, guys. This is the... Hi, guys. This is the uh, Golden Jubilee Special Edition magazine. I have been showing you at the 7 o'clock program, but I know there are more people in this program. So I just want to show you again that this is now available for you to purchase is $40. And the reason I'm making emphasis on it right now, first, is that we have people from all over the world that are here for HMT. So right now that they're here, they can help you to bring it to your, to your destination. If the people that live in your location, for example, if the people that are here that lives in America, 
they can bring it for you and then post it to your different uh, various <coughs> links. So they're willing to do that. So right now we have this kind of thing. But let me just continue to tell you something else. I think Dr. Dr. Sonia actually mentioned this yesterday, that this is a part of history. The Greeks in previous years, they've been, but they haven't had the opportunity that we have with technology, with um, development to document their life. This is a 300 page, 300 pages of Dr. Sunday's life, ministry, everything that he has done over the last 30 something years. And you will be beholding a piece of history. So this is a real opportunity to purchase one of these magazines, or you can purchase more than one. It's first come, first serve. So if you come, you would get, if you ask, you'll get this magazine. So what you need to do is to contact me, Maya Waolaya or Julie Ngoya on Messenger, write to us and let us know if you would like one of this and wherever you are, if there's somebody that we can send it through, we'll help you with the logistic. But most people are leaving, HMT finishes tomorrow, so most people are leaving tomorrow or Sunday. So hurry to do this, okay? Because this is the quickest way that you can get it. We try to get an electronic version, but the best version to have is a hard copy. So a hard copy of a piece of history. Dr. Sunday's Adelaide's live history, everything is here. I'm trying to roll the microphone and also to show you some of the pages. It's really, the really excellent information. Um, so let me just show you some of the pages, hold on. And also guys, especially our DSA family, some of you are also in this magazine. So you would see yourself in this piece of history. There's so much here that you can see is more than just getting Dr. Sunday's book, the pictures, the testimonies, how he started the ministry, his life when he was young, picture of him when he was in, in picture of him when he was in Indomila, everything is here. So this is a real good opportunity to own a piece of history. So I just want to show you because there are more people in the evening uh, program. So here it is, the special edition Golden Jubilee magazine. Thank you.